Hi guys, me again. Um, today I'm going to show you how to varnish your uh, your background. Um, this viv has already have uh, four coats so far of uh, of varnish, and the uh, the Grand Canyon paper background has had about seven. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to uh, how to varnish your viv. I am going to use what I. 90% of the time normally used for uh, for my backgrounds which is a polyvine dead flat matte varnish and it's a, it's a little bit like PVA glue um, it's uh, doesn't smell and it dries pretty quickly if you get a fan to it as well and um, and yeah I'm going to show you how to varnish your enclosure Okay, first thing you'll need is a, an old bowl, <laughs> one of the kids' bowls, and uh, get your varnish, give it a good shake, always going to make sure you give it a good shake, open it up and pour it in, like so. By the way, this washes out very easily and uh, all you'll need to wash out your brushes with is uh, some warm water, just like you would if you were uh, using normal household paint. And most importantly, a brush, a nice clean brush, nothing that's been used for painting before or anything like that, otherwise you'll find, uh, you'll find the paint will get mixed in with the varnish. You want something nice and soft again, not hard and stiff. Now, with this polyvine, I put in a tiny bit of water, just a tiny bit. And what that does, it helps to water it down a little bit and give it a good mix, like so. And then you're ready to roll. Okay. Okay, so uh, so this is what I've done recently. I have primed, so I sanded, primed, and painted the bowls that the customer gave me. As you can see, they're near enough a good colour match. And they've already had a couple of coats of varnish on them. Also done the rocks in exactly the same way. As you can see, which is uh, which basically again just prime them a couple of times, paint them, varnish, and then sprinkle a tiny little bit of sand. And there is my varnish. Now see if I can hold the camera while I'm doing this. Show you. And what you want to do is take off as much as you can. Otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to dribble all down your background. Like so. And then, you can see on here, Spread it all over. Now be careful not to put too much on because what will happen is it will dribble down into corners. And then what you'll find is once it's dried, you'll have like a white, a white bit forming on the corners, which doesn't completely dry up. If you find you've got too much on one bit, just dab it and then spread it out somewhere else. Like so. The great thing about a soft brush is it gets into all those little knots and crannies as well. Just dab it down. Remember I've got sand sprinkled on here as well, so it's a bit hard to just brush on. You want to dab it in. 
again as you can see we've got ones on there I'll just dab them in and a bit more again wipe it off you see how much actually comes out of the brush and Now, it doesn't take long to dry at all. You can get a fan to it, or if you've got the heating set up in the vib already, you can put the glass doors on and put the heat on for a while, and that will help it to set and dry quicker. Yeah, see, I've got a bit forming there. Now, what I find is, oh, I use a fan. What I find is, I keep an eye on it, and if I see any runs forming, I dab them out quickly before they dry out. Hello again. Right, I have a nice clean brush, some fresh varnish in there. And you've noticed with this brush, it's stiff, right? I think this is much better for something that's flat, like a back wall. What you want to do again, change hands because I'm right-handed. Right, what you want to do again, brush off excess varnish from your brush and then starting from one side, just go spread it and you see it there. Any runs, just get rid of them because otherwise they're really going to show out on this back. Now, the thing is, with a back wall, you're going to have to keep an eye on this. You can't just leave it until it's dry because you'll get, I don't know if you can see, you'll get that from where it's running down. Okay, once again, take out those runs. You don't want those. And a bit on there as well. Now, as you can see, this varnish is white, but it does go transparent when it's dry. If it's spread on nice and thinly. I think this back has had about probably nine coats now. <laughs> So there you have it. Remember to let it dry out properly in between each coat. You'll know when it's fully dry because uh, it won't be white anymore. Now you can use any sort of household varnish as long as it's clear, obviously. Some of them do come in coloured because they're designed for wood. But I find this stuff is great and it dries very quick. Here we go, a little bit around there, a little bit up there. I've still got the ceiling to do again as well. As you can see I've painted the ceiling blue to match the background. That's had a couple of coats. Okay, right, once this is all dry, I can start putting the, uh, putting the plants in, which will involve a bit of drilling. Hey guys, it's uh, Becky again. Um, right, the last, uh, last bit I showed you was uh, varnishing uh, the entire vip. Um, now, I wasn't going to show you how I did it over and over and over again, so I just basically showed you a little bit of how to do it. Um, I gave this entire Viv uh, about six, seven coats of varnish 
to make sure that it was uh, it was bulletproof at the end of the day. Um, yeah, once it was all varnished and completely dry, I uh, went in there with a drill, drilled some holes and fitted the plants in. I'll show you a close up in a minute. Fitted the plants in and uh, secured them down with silicon sealant, the uh, same stuff that you use to stick your uh, your poly down with. Uh, left that overnight and uh, and they were nice and dry but yeah I will uh, I'll show you the inside of it I fitted all the equipment as well by the way and um, as requested by the customer he wanted me to fit all the equipment for him so that's what's been done mostly today but uh, I'll give you a quick quick glimpse at the uh, at the finished result okay hello right Here's the inside of the Viv. As you can see, it's got a, uh, a ceramic heater with a uh, ceramic cage guard as well. As you can see, the plants have really done the job in here. They really do bring the Viv to life, I think. Or rather, the background. You see, you've got that plant up there. And another one there. Let's see if I can zoom out a little. But yeah, it does look very warm and cosy in there. It's also got digital thermometers in the front. As you can see, customer wanted three, one in the left. Oh, hi, Abby. How's it going, darling? Oh, you're not hungry again, are you? Hey, Abby. Look, there's people. Talk to people. Talk to them. You're not going in that viv. No, you're not. <laughs> right, going back to the subject. There's some digital thermometers in here. Which these things are, they're great. They really are accurate. As you can see here, here's the little sensors for them. I mean, obviously they're not going to stay like this. They will be positioned in, in place tomorrow. But also there's a sensor at the back here that's connected to a thermostat and that's for the ceramic heater. And you've got another sensor here, which is connected to another thermostat, which is for the um, the heat mat, which is hidden under here. But yeah, this will be for uh, for nighttime use. Obviously, all the bowls and that lot will have to be removed. But it's just for a little bit of heat. Yeah. But there you have it. So yeah, I'll just go. Uh, I'll go through again what you'll need and uh, and how to prepare. Okay, uh, haven't got long. Battery's running low. Uh, okay, so you want to make a background, yeah, but you're not quite sure how to do it or what you're going to do. Um, for instance, the customer approached me with a whole bunch of pictures of roughly what he wanted which came in really handy because that gives you a good idea of what's expected of you. But I'll give you a glimpse here. This is something that somebody else has done, which is what he kind of got the idea from. But yeah, basically, just go on to Google. That's where I go. Go on to Google. Do a picture search for whatever you're looking for. For like Buddha Temple, uh, Mayan temple, we'll see on here, that's another example, but yeah, just uh, go on to Google, do picture searches, print them out, decide roughly what you like, and, uh, and go through there, and um, yeah, again on a list, you'll need polystyrene, silicon, tile grout, paint, um, and 
some form of varnish or, or lacquer and, uh, and a craft knife, some brushes, obviously an old spoon and an old bowl that you're not going to use anymore and uh, yeah away you go. It's not that difficult really. A lot of people say they've tried and they've failed and they're not creative and they don't have an artistic bone in their body. Neither do I. But um, but yeah, I seem to come out with these. So uh, so yeah, please, please, please give it a try for yourself. You won't be disappointed. Take your time. At the end of the day, there's no rush. Okay, there's no time limit. This viv has taken me about five weeks in total, and that's working three to four hours every day, apart from Christmas Day and Boxing Day, obviously. But um. But yeah, it is time consuming and you do need patience, but at the end result is really, really worth it. And um, and yeah, that's my final video for the Grand Canyon. And um, I'm hoping to get a couple of more vivarium soon for my snakes. And um, I'll see what I come up with plan-wise and hopefully make some more videos for you guys. If there's anything I haven't covered on here, then, uh, then please, you know, leave a message on, on the uh, comment or uh, or you can message me direct and uh, I'll be happy to help. Okay, take it easy, guys. Bye. You say bye. What? Bye. <laughs> He's a nutter.